What's up guys, today I'm gonna to address one of the most common questions I get on this channel and on Instagram and stuff, and that is how did I get my Roomba vacuum into HomeKit? I'm gonna show you step by step exactly how I did it using hoops, and now I can include my Roomba vacuum in all of my HomeKit scenes, automations, and even control it with Siri. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me today. For those new here, welcome. My name is Shane and on this channel I'm building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit platform with new videos dropping every single Sunday right here. So as you may or may not know, there is no product category for vacuums within HomeKit. That means there is no robot vacuum that you can buy today on the market that supports HomeKit out of the box. But I love my Roomba vacuum and I want it to work in HomeKit. So today I'm gonna show you how I accomplished that using Hoobs. Thanks to Hoobs for sponsoring today's video. Hoobs is an out of the box system that allows you to connect over 2,000 accessories to HomeKit. I've used Hoobs to connect things like my Roomba, the MyQ garage door opener, and even my twinkly Christmas lights all of which do not support HomeKit natively out of the box. Now, if you're not that familiar with Hoobs and you do wanna see a full uh, setup and review, I did make a video on that a while back. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna check that out. Now, I'm using a Roomba 960. I've had this thing for a few years. It's great, I love it. But this method should work also with other models and even other types of vacuums just using different plugins. In Hoobs, just search for a plugin that will work with your type of vacuum. Now, if you can find one that's Hoobs certified, that's even better. That just means that it's been vetted by the Hoobs team and is guaranteed to work well with the platform and that uh, user interface. Now, I'll be using the Roomba STV plugin. This is the one that I like, and this one has actually recently been certified by Hoobs. Now, if this particular plugin doesn't work with your model of Roomba, don't worry, there is another plugin called the iRobot Roomba plugin, I believe, and uh, I was able to get that plugin to work as well. The steps and everything are pretty much identical. All right, so I'm gonna open up my computer and we are going to fire up Hoobs first. So we're gonna go to hoobs.local. Right, we're at the dashboard now. If we go to our plugins and we just search for Roomba, we should be able to find the one we need. There we go, that Roomba STV. That is the one we're gonna use. I'm gonna install that. You can see it's Hoobs certified. We'll wait a minute for this to download. Okay, and now our Roomba STV plugin is installed. So if we click on the configuration here, if we tap add accessory, you're gonna see we need all this information here which we don't have yet. So we need to get this first and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. It's really not that hard. They made it pretty simple, but I'm gonna walk you through it. Now first we need to get the IP address of your Roomba. Now this can be done by simply opening your iRobot app, tap on the settings, and then choose Wi-Fi settings. Now your phone must be on the same Wi-Fi network in order for this to work, but you should be able to see the IP address of your Roomba here in the settings. Go ahead and write that down or copy that. Actually, what I'm gonna do is create like a little text document where I'm gonna save some of these numbers. And uh, actually, it's a good idea to maybe just save them somewhere on your computer for a later date. So I'm going to save my IP address first, all right? And what we have to do now is run a single command in the Hoobs terminal just to get all the rest of this information for us. It's not that hard. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Hoobs made it easy. They made a single command that we can use. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And we're gonna click on our plugin section here. And if we go back down to Roomba STV, click on the details right here. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see in step two, we gotta find our robot password and this BLID number, B-L-I-D number. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this command right here, this whole command, and I'm gonna go back to my text document and I'm gonna paste it in here. And then I need to take my IP address from my Roomba from earlier. So I'm gonna copy this and then I'm gonna paste it inside this command right here. So remove this whole section, including those quote marks and paste that. And now let's copy this whole command here. Go, let's go back into Hoobs and if we tap on our three dots up here in the corner and choose terminal, okay, let's paste in 
that command that we copied and hit enter. I'm gonna give this a minute and let this run. And what we're gonna to have to actually do once this is done is go to our Roomba and hold down the home button. And it's gonna kind of put it in like Wi-Fi mode and then uh, come back to this. So uh, you can see here, we're seeing some of these like warnings. Don't worry about any of those. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now it's done. It did take a minute. So be patient with that step there. But uh, once it's done, you're gonna see this little comment here. It says, make sure your robot is on the home base and powered on. Then press and hold the home button on your robot until it plays a series of tones. Release the button and your robot will flash the Wi-Fi light. Then come back and press any key right here. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. I'm gonna go push the button on my Roomba and I'm gonna come back so we can finish this. Okay, so I did just run downstairs. Now tap any button on this. I'm gonna catch my breath. Okay, and you can see it gives us all the information for our Roomba, okay? Well, it looks like I actually got a error uh, getting the password. Follow the instructions and try again. Okay, well I thought I did do that, so let's just try running the command again. We'll try this one more time. I guess I'll have to run downstairs once more, one more time. <sighs> okay, all right, one more time. Press any button. Let's see if it works this time. Ah, there we go. Okay, it worked this time. Don't know what the issue was there. This is real life here. Sometimes you just gotta do it twice. So you can see here, we now have the BLID number and the password, okay? So I'm gonna save both of these numbers I'm gonna copy that BLID number. And I'm gonna paste it in my little text document. And then I'm gonna copy my password. And I'm gonna paste that over here as well so I can reference this later, okay? Now that's really it, the hard part is over. Now it's just a matter of filling in that information in the settings here. So if we go back to our settings and tap on Roomba, you can choose add accessory. And here's the name and just fill in this information. It really can be whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine Roomba, model mine is 960. Here's that B lid number. So I'm gonna go to my text document and I'm gonna copy that first number that I copied earlier and I'm gonna paste it in here. Now we need that password, which is this one right here. I'm gonna copy this, paste it right there. The IP address, okay, so that was the first number that we got from the very beginning. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it in here. Auto refresh, these next three settings, you can actually look in the plugin documentation page, which I will put a link in the description below for that, but it'll tell you more information about these. I'll show you how I set mine up. You can change this if you need to. I think they said the keep alive may drain the battery a little bit more, but you know, this is how I set mine. I put yes to both of these, and this has worked well for me for quite a while, and I put this at 30. Okay, now I choose save changes. Give it a minute to refresh. Okay, and there we go. Now if we go to our accessories, we should see our Roomba in here. If we choose unassigned, there you go. We've got our Roomba and it shows our battery here. So you kind of get like two accessories. I can actually control the vacuum right here from the Hoobs dashboard. And since I've already added Hoobs to my HomeKit setup, any new accessory that I add in Hoobs is now exposed to a home app and is accessible within the home app. So I just go over to the default room, which is where everything goes automatically. And of course I can change the room and everything. And you can see my Roomba vacuum is exposed now. I can turn it on and off check the battery status, and check whether or not it is currently charging. Now one really cool thing, as I said in the beginning, is I can now include this in my scenes and automations. 
For example, I can have a scene maybe that runs every morning at a certain time, or you can have an automation that runs when the last person leaves the house every day. And as an added note, the low battery status is actually exposed to HomeKit as well. Uh, this is really cool. You will have to use a third party app to get access to this, such as the Home Plus 4 app, which you guys hear me talk a lot about on this channel. Uh, but when you're using one of these third party apps, you can access more things within HomeKit and you can run an automation with that low battery battery status. So for example, if that low battery status turns on, you can, you know, turn some of your home kit lights red or whatever, you know, get creative, but that is something else that you can do with this. Another really cool thing, if you're using the Home Plus 4 app, you can even add a vacuum icon to your accessory. Now, personally, when I'm buying new products for my smart home, I try to always buy products that support home kit natively out of the box but sometimes that just isn't an option and these robot vacuums are a great example of this seeing as how there aren't any on the market right now that support home kit so using something like hoops is a great way to tie in some of those other accessories into home kit that you otherwise couldn't do this is also great i know of a lot of people who you know want to convert over to home kit but maybe already have a lot of other smart home products such as ring doorbells or nest thermosats all that kind of stuff you can actually bring over all those accessories into HomeKit as well using hoops which is something you can't do out of the box because those products don't support HomeKit natively now if you have any questions or maybe if you use hoops yourself drop some comments down in the description below and let's continue this conversation you know what are some cool creative ways that you're using hoops or homebridge or whatever it is you're doing in your home kit setup let's talk about it thanks again to hoops for sponsoring today's video and again i'll put links to hoops and everything else that i'm using in my home kit setup down in the description below i hope you guys found this video helpful if you did please give it a big thumbs up that does help other people find these videos if you haven't subscribed yet please consider doing so we're dropping new home kit smart home videos every Sunday right here thank you guys so much for watching and until next time we'll see y'all later